This week, UCAS announced that the personal statement is changing. They have changed the format, completely mixed it up. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how that's going to affect you and what those changes are exactly. Now, the way it's changing is instead of having a long 4,000 character, 47 line passage, it has now been broken down into three questions, which I'll talk about later. However, what they say is that word count or character count can be divided amongst those questions however you like. Now, why have they done this? Well, UCAS chief Joe Saxon has said that it is to even the playing field to help less privileged people who come who don't have as much support help probably guide them a little bit more in how they answer those questions. Specifically, she said that her aim was to ensure that the doors of opportunity stay open for as many students as possible so that they can benefit from a university education. She then said, I saw firsthand how the personal statement can help students really clarify and articulate their ambition, but also how challenging it can be for those with less support. This is an attempt to tackle the gap that they say is stubbornly persistent between the number of less privileged people applying to university versus those who are more privileged. They said that actually, in fact, the less privileged camp has actually decreased in numbers last year of people applying to university. Now I'll tell you what these three questions are and then I'm going to give you my opinion on actually how effective it is and how you can use this information to help you when you finally submit your personal statement. So the three questions are why do you want to study this course or subject? How have your qualifications and studies helped you to prepare for this course or subject? And finally, what else have you done to prepare outside of education and why are these experiences helpful? Now, to me, this isn't much different to how a good personal statement is structured. Actually, in this video, I talk about exactly how to lay it out in the old format if you're still submitting one for this year. But to me, they are all the things that you need. You always need to start with a good why you want to do the course and finish with a strong why. In between, you have to talk about the experience that you've gained, what you've done, what qualifications, how you've explored that career. That could be a work experience placement. It could be uh, online course, whatever it is to show that you've delved deeper into that subject or course or career and you understand about it. And then the third question really is all about extracurricular activities. How have you shown that you're outstanding? What traits have you developed? What skills have you gained that are going to benefit you on that course? Now, in my opinion, it really isn't much different. I think that the aim to help people from less privileged backgrounds who are getting less support may help them. I think on YouTube, you could probably get the idea that you're supposed to talk about those three broad things. I don't think it's gonna help them versus the people who are getting support to really nail those three questions. And also it's to help people understand how to split that character count between those three questions. Would you do it a third, a third, a third? I certainly wouldn't, but how, how are you gonna do that? And does that really solve the problem of people who are not getting support being able to answer it the best way possible. I really doubt it. I think that the change is well-intentioned, but is that change really going to make the difference that they hoped? I'm sure they didn't naively assume that this was gonna fix everything and be a silver bullet. Yes, it is a small step in the right direction, but is it really going to have that much of an impact? I'm really not sure. I think another facet of this is maybe to try and stop people using AI. Uh, I actually did a doctor versus AI personal statement in this video where I showed you probably why you shouldn't use it for anything really other than spell checking and grammar. But ultimately it is still just a small change and for some people it's more significant than others because some universities look at personal statements, some don't, some only look at them at interview stage. So again, it is still really down to your individual application and what the other elements of it are. So if you want to find out how to submit a really strong application and the five key elements that you need to know, I recommend that you check out this video here. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video.